Well, I've got all the bearings on in. That is the main bearings. Put assembly lube on them, and they're ready to go. And make sure, of course, that when you put this together, the slots go with the holes that uh, for the lubrication. There's two halves of that, and uh, you definitely want to make sure the slots go in the bottom half of the, um, well, I should say, on the, on the side where the holes are, so you get lubrication there. And I'm ready to put this together, put the crank on in, and we'll uh, check our clearances and go to the next step. Okay, right now I'm checking the clearances between the, the main bearings and the crankshaft journal. And uh, what you see there is a horizontal line, and what that is is the plastic gauge. Um, this particular product, you know, let's see if you can see that there. Yeah, it's from one to three thousandths of an inch. The idea is, is you take a little piece of plastic, which is actually inside here, and you put it on the on the journal there, and you go ahead and um, you know put the main bearing on, crush it down or torque it down to whatever the torque setting should be. And then whatever footprint you have left, of course you want to check to see what the thickness of that line is and that thickness of the line corresponds or correlates with the, uh, the chart right here. So you just, you know, line up the chart that, that matches on up with that particular line. So if I take this and do a quick little check, let's see if I can get that. It looks like it's somewhere between, uh, I don't know, it's definitely not one and a half, just a shy underneath two. So it's somewhere right in between one and a half and two thousands. And you're going to do that for each one of the, your, your journals. Of course, you want to make sure that you've got good clearances. I think on this one, I think it's for one and a half to three thousands. So check all of them and uh, make sure they're all, all spot on. And as you can see, you know, I've got them on uh, all of them. I can't even hardly even see that one right there. Yeah, I guess you can. So check them all on out. And um, that's the front of the nose, of course, and then it, over here to the back side. And you can see all of them there. But they all check on out as being fine. Just one of those steps. And then from here on, you clean the threads, of course, and lubricate them on up. Um, put some assembly lube on, the, on this side of the, the bearing. And it just torque one down. So uh, pretty much close to just putting the crank on in here. Everything seems to be looking pretty good. This is a new crank, by the way. Um, the other one had a spun bearing, and uh, it was damaged the crank beyond repair. So uh, all standard size bearings, and uh, this is just again one step. Uh, it's completed, and uh, time to move on to the next part. Okay, I'm getting ready to put this piston together. Uh, first thing I want to say is that <clears throat> you do get a new set of bushings for the rods. And um, surprisingly, the rods, when I pulled these pistons out of the, the, the engine, the uh, pistons were kind of tight on the, on, the, on the wrist pins. So I, I just, with the kit, you get a new set of, of uh, wrist pin bushings, took them on down to the machine shop, had them put them on in, and uh, there is kind of a FYI, they actually need to size these bushings uh, at the shop. And you can see they've done a wonderful job. It's actually a mirror polish on that. Uh, so, um, so you need to get that done. And with it, you know, of course, you get the new piston. You get a new set of rings with the kit. And it's very nice where they identify you know, the, the, the top second and, uh, and third ring. So I'll go ahead and put these on. And um, of course the, the, you get the wrist pin clips and with the kit you also get some new uh, connecting rod bolts. So the kit is pretty complete. It's just a matter of putting this all together and then dropping on in, into the, in the engine block and, uh, and then of course lastly checking the the uh, clearance on the, on the connecting rod uh, bearings with respect to the crank shaft. So I think I don't think it's necessary for me to show you all the steps, but uh, but nonetheless, I'm going to first put the connecting rod uh, uh, on with the wrist pin, uh, lubricate a little bit, uh, put the snap rings on, and then put the the, the uh, piston rings on, starting with the oil ring first, and then uh, and of course second the top ring, 
You know, by the way, on these rings, they will tell you, at least not on the third ring, but on the top, on the, the top ring and the second ring, which side is top, which is pretty hard to get. So if you just take your time, you should have no problem putting this together. And then, of course, the last thing, I'll just drop this on in the engine block and, and use a, a ring compressor to be able to put that together. So I think that covers everything for right now. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and knock this piston on in. I've got the connecting rod, I'm sorry, the crankshaft so that the connecting rod journal is the furthest away from the connecting rod as it's coming down. So you just want to knock it on in there and then help it along with my one hand when everything's compressed and sliding on in there. So I got that tight. Again, uh, I want to make sure everything's pointed forward. At least that arrow is I'm getting this piston in the right way. I'll use my little plastic hammer, just knock it on in there. Just be gentle with it. It's going on in. That's it. So it's all knocked on in. Keep in mind, I got the arrows, all this pointing forward. So I'm going to push this all the way down and, and help guide the connecting rod with my other hand. So I'll push down from the top underneath all. I'll, I'll grab onto the connecting rod so I, because I don't want that connecting rod to uh, make metal on metal contact with the, the, the crankshaft uh, rod journal. So I'll just be slow about it and uh, next step really is, is I'll, I'll go through, put the cap and everything on with the bearing, check the bearing clearance and then we'll go, go from there. And as you can see, I've got plastic gauge right here. I'm going to go ahead and put the matching cap on there and uh, torque it down and then check the, the uh, thickness of actually the clearance between the connector rod bearing and the journal. Um, as far as like what really, uh, what other notables there are as far as the assembly goes, um, you know, just make sure you have the piston uh, pointed front. And it'll actually have a mark on it. Um, so, uh, because there is an irregular shape to the combustion chamber, so make sure you get that done right. Uh, make sure also you've got the, you know, the, the, the correct orientation of the bearing cap. You'll see serial numbers, actually they're on that side. So make sure you have the, the correct uh, orientation with the, with the cap, so you put it together uh, the way it was actually uh, machined. So that's another important thing. As far as knocking the piston on in, you know, uh, just go back up a little bit. You know, I'm just using a regular um, piston ring compressor tool. Works pretty good. This one's up to four inch, so that should be more than adequate for, uh, for this, which actually has like a four inch cylinder bore, uh, but on size. So uh, actually, it's a little bit less than that, but, but nonetheless, uh, that's really all you need to know as far as uh, putting this this uh, piston on in and, and putting it together. I didn't use any sort of special tools for compressing the, or actually taking the rings and putting them on there. I just was gentle with them, did it by hand. Uh, the oil ring on this is a little bit unusual. Uh, you can take it apart. Uh, it's a two-piece, and in fact, I, I put on the, uh, the spring first, and then I put the oil ring wiper over on the top of it. Uh, when you put the rings on the piston, I like to clock the all the gaps so they're at 60 degrees off so the bottom ring gap is 60 degrees away from the next ring and 60 degrees away from the next ring so uh, that keeps the, the ring gaps from lining on up um, so I think that pretty much covers it I'm just gonna go ahead and torque this on down check the gap uh, these are standard bearing sizes and it's a new crank so I really don't think I've got anything to worry about and probably won't even take any tape of that but, um, but nonetheless, I just wanted to stop and take a quick little uh, video at where I'm at right now. Okay, you can see it's not so great, but there's a footprint here of, of the plastic gauge. Uh, I just went through and, and tightened up the, the cap or the, uh, the uh, connecting rod bolts, crushed that plastic gauge, and we'll just use this gauge here to find out what the actual thickness is for the clearances. And if I put this on up there, 
It's uh, there's actually a little bit of a larger footprint, but but nonetheless, it's between three, two and three thousandths. I think the maximum allowed is three and a half, so we're good to go here. So um, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, the rest of it, I'm just going to go ahead and put uh, uh, lube here, uh, semi lube. If I can show you right here, I'm going to go ahead and put a semi lube on this uh, on both the upper and lower halves of the bearing and torque it together and uh, that should cover it. So I think that pretty much finishes up th this part of the build. And why do I, why do you want to put build or the assembly lube on this? Well, when you first start the engine on up, the engine will run dry. It's important to have everything well lubricated when you do that. So um, using the, this type of assembly lube is, is critical when you're building this engine. So that's it.